and a fine Sunday afternoon to you folks. So glad to be back in God's house this evening on a beautiful Sunday, sunny, Sunday day. We've had a great day, and, and I just uh, want to, I only got one complaint, Brother Rich. You want to hear it now or after a while? The picnic went great today, but what am I going to eat after church? I don't got no leftovers at my house, so what am I going to eat, you know? So let, let's get fed here at God's house tonight with, with spiritual food. That way you won't have to worry about what's, what's after a while. But we are thankful for, for what went on. And thank that, that lady for opening up the, the farm out there for us today. And uh, we hope and pray that uh, as, as she talked, that we just let God lead us and guide us in our decisions. She was telling about all the decisions that she let God uh, lead her on. And, and it, looked at, it looks like it, it, it came out on God's side with, with great tip. Uh, great uh, things, but we are privileged to be here, so privileged to know you folks, and hoping and praying that you'll have a, a good service this evening. Let God lead in this service. Brother Bob, can you ask God's blessing on this evening's service for us? Amen. Sister Connie has chosen page 350 at the bottom of the page for our first selection this evening. Those of you out on the internet, at internet, we hope and pray that you've got a book, but if not, I'm sure you'll probably remember these songs by memory. 350, Sweet By and By. Beautiful shore, Brother Amen. Jim. Page 181 for the next selection this evening. Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Is Jesus yours this evening? If he's not, he certainly can be.
we've got a lot to praise our Savior about. You know, as you read, read the, the read the news and hear the news of all the things going on. But, and you know, and if it's not happening to you, you can say praise the Lord because it could happen to you. I'd like to mention right now, I, I heard something yesterday that's really bothered me, and Brother J.D. mentioned it a while ago also. I know, I know a lot of you just got scanners. You know a lot what's going in, on. But there was an incident over on Riddabarger Road yesterday, excuse me, on, on uh, Greenbrier, excuse me, on Greenbrier yesterday that really disturbed me. That, uh, that, di that disturbance of, of that family and those, those three precious little kids and that, wa that wife, woman, getting beat up. They had the life flight, one of those little kids, to, to ho hospital in, in Columbus. You know, that is, that is terrible. That's just right next door, folks. That's not the big city. That's, That's not right. New York City. That's not Los Angeles. That's not Columbus. That's the little town of Clarktown. You know, and that just shows me how much the devil is working, trying to, trying to defeat Amen. the work of the brothers and sisters in Christ. So I ask, I don't know the name of, of the little baby, and I don't know its condition today, but you know I serve a Jesus, the Savior, that Excellent. knows it all and can do it all. And I ask you to remember that request this evening as we pray that Amen. God will be merciful to that, that, that whole situation. You may have a prayer request this evening that we can lift up to our Heavenly Father. I know Sister Jan's going to have tests on or going to the doctor on Wednesday, and I know Brother uh, Roy is going in the morning. Maybe somebody else is going to have tests or something this week. I had a phone call a while ago, and her sister's going, they think she's had a stroke, and they were going to pick her um, up from Columbus. Her name is uh, Nancy Pitts. Remember Nancy Pitts this evening as we pray. Continue to remember Amy that I put on the prayer chain. Um, they moved her from OSU to uh, Louisville, University of Kentucky, I believe, but she's still critical and uh, really needs your prayers. Let's remember Amy this evening as she, as she goes through her procedures and her ordeals. Someone else this evening. Well, I remember uh, Nancy's dad and that whole family. Yes, amen. Remember that, that situation, that prayer request from Brother J.D. this evening. Someone else. Amen. Remember, Brother Ben Music is eating as we pray. Someone else. Someone else. Brother George, is he the pastor over, I believe, the West Fort Yes. Yeah. Okay. Remember him is eating as we pray. Someone else. Amen. Remember Sister Edna this evening as we pray. All those others, dear ladies and gentlemen, that can't be here with us this evening. Let's lift them up. Don't forget them because they are still, I'm sure, desire our prayers and desire a touch from our Heavenly Father. Amen. Somebody else. Someone else. Amen. Remember Brother Bob's children. Remember our lost loved ones. All the churches in the area that needs, needs mm -hmm. lifted up and needs a little bit of spiritual uh, lifting this evening. Let's remember them this evening as we pray. Anybody else? Yes. I tell you what, coming to church tonight, they're still bright. Amen. Still bright. Amen. Amen. And it's not a habit, it's just something I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. uh, tonight I hope to sit and listen to Jimmy preach and uh, you all sing, and I just like going to church. Amen. You know? And I thank all the people who haven't been able to yeah, you're make it out. Let's pray for them. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We were out to see him the other day, and they wasn't home, and we wanted to talk a little bit to him, but uh, they, and they must have a doctor's form or something because they won't go out running around, that's for sure. They always uh, so remember the McDaniels family, remember the Connolly family, and, and I, on and on and on and on of our, our brothers and sisters in Christ that's uh, dealing with this virus also. Someone Re else this evening. Remember the people at Miller's Run. Um, they've been closed all this time, and they opened one week and then close back and Amen. just pray for all of them because remember brother bob alexander's church up on miller's run this evening as we pray someone else remember that remember that family and that request this evening anyone else if not brother jim goodson ask god's blessing on these requests for me please
Father, we come to you again tonight, Lord. We thank you, God, for your, your grace and your mercy. God, we come to you because, Lord, who else can we go to? Yes. You are the King, you are the Father, you are our all in all, Lord. There's nobody like you in, in all of heaven and earth. And Father, we praise you tonight. We thank you for the plan of salvation. We plan on, yes, we thank you for God for your Son Jesus Christ. Jesus. You made it all possible for yes. us to gather like this together today. So Lord, we know we've heard a lot of requests tonight. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you, you know all, all of them better than what we could even imagine. Yes. You know what it's going to take, Lord. We just leave them in your hands, asking you, Lord, to comfort those that are sick and afflicted. Yes, Be with those, Lord, that have uh, health situations, Lord, that that they need to go to the doctors to help the doctors, Lord, and their times where they can come and, uh, and help those people. Give them the knowledge and, the, and the, Lord, the, the uh, tools to do what they have to do. We ask you, Lord, to be with each and every one out there in the airways tonight, Lord. Those that are sick and afflicted, those that could not come to church tonight. And be with those tonight, Lord, that are here. Their efforts, Lord, we just praise the, uh, you what, for helping them to come to this house of worship. And God, to hear your word. And, and Lord, to uh, give you praise and honor and glory. So bless each thing that's said and done tonight, God. We leave these things in your hands. Yes, There's Lord. nobody else, Father. Though you're the great healer, the great physician. Yes. And we just love you tonight, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Appreciate that this evening. Sister Connie has chosen page 137. 137 for the next selection this evening. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. this evening and trust in him put your trust in our heavenly father the one as we have always said that can do all and will do if we just have the faith to believe in him this evening Amen. we had some good singing out to the farm today for our picnic and i hope and pray these folks have still got a song or two left in them tonight uh, but if you if you came this way with a song 
Miss McKenzie sitting back there all firm and proper. We certainly want you to sing also this evening. But anybody that would like to, uh, to sing a song this evening, come right on and make yourself at home. While they're coming, maybe you might want to stand and testify this evening. Anybody at all? I certainly did enjoy today. God is, is a great God. Yes, amen. And we had we had a good time out there. Uh, it was a peaceful setting. Yes. Very peaceful, quiet. Uh, the fellowship was great, and the spirit was great. Yes, amen. And I want to thank God today for that amen. gathering today. Amen. With many things, God's been so good to me. I have family and friends who share in all I do. But if I lose it all and I am left with nothing, if I have the Lord, I know. Doing great. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
just trying okay. to figure out. I thought it was cheap. <laughs> I thought it was <laughs> The sinner was plunged beneath the flood and God saved. Since then I walk in forgiveness. All of my guilt was erased. The chains of the past are broken at last I got saved. Oh, I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. How good I want. Sister Loretta's got a song for us this evening, so be much in prayer for her as she prepares to sing for us. You know, I listen to that song. When you got Jesus, what else you want? I mean, we all we all got wants. Do we, we want them? Do we need them? No, not nine times out of ten. We probably don't need them, but we want things. But as long as we want Jesus, and Jesus wants us, He wants everybody. He don't want to, He don't want to see anybody go to hell. He wants to, to save the lost this evening. So be much in prayer for Sister Loretta. As she sings for us this evening. It wasn't supposed to take me too long, so <laughs> we discussed that already today. <clears throat> this was uh, Bill Pistol's song, and I made him sit down with me and uh, teach me the chords because he sang it in a different chord. <laughs> I wasn't there by the shore of Galilee. When he touched the blinded eyes and made them see. And though I did not see the empty tomb that day, I still believe. Yes, I know what Jesus. 
Jesus did for me. I believe there is power in the blood of the Lamb, and I believe there is healing in the touch of His hand. But the greatest of all miracles was when my Jesus saved me. Yes, I know what Jesus did. life anew be made free pure and bold and I have felt it touch the chains of sin and set my spirit free yes I know what Jesus did for me I believe someone else this evening with a song or testimony or praise item or whatever you might offer the service this evening. Anybody at all? Are you going to sing for us this evening? Well, come on. While they're coming this evening to minister to us in song, someone with a testimony. did for you unless you tell me right but i know what he did for me amen i was reading something uh, i know whenever i was young my mom was a big elvis fan and my dad didn't like that at all because <laughs> my, my dad had the hair slicked back and all that stuff you know and, and i don't know if there was a like if he felt like there was a competition there but when he passed in in 77 i believe it was uh, on this day um, if you go back and look, um, of course, I'm still old enough, I watched it um, as well, but if you go back and look at some of the things that you may see on social media today, you'll see the multitude of people crying and throwing themselves down because he passed. And, and, um, and I like his music. I, I enjoy it. Uh, I'm, I'm all right with that, nothing against him, but I think, what if we cried like that over every lost soul that was yeah, left amen. on this planet? And I'm not saying he was lost. That's between him and God. Uh, but I do know this. When he left, the king didn't leave. The king's still on his side. Yeah. The king's yeah. coming back. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but if we really had a burden, really had a desire, if we had just really had a burden for ourselves, for our own spiritual condition, let alone anybody else's, if we had that kind of a burden to say, God, I'll put everything else down and take you. You are the thing that I need the most in my life. Um, I think it would revive us. It would be a one-man revival, then a house full revival, then yeah. a church full revival, then a community revival. But it all has to start somewhere. Amen. Um, so I don't know what Jesus did for you. That's a pretty song. and We could sing it. We could all sing it together. But unless we tell each other, we're not going to know. But I do know what Jesus did for me. And I'm thankful that he did it for me. Amen. Amen. Jimmy's mom always liked Elvis too, and Jimmy used to cry oh, because she'd listen to him. He didn't like him either. His little. My mom's as big of an aggravator as what I am. And she would aggravate me senseless. He'd just cry and scream, and then I'd just cry and scream too. I was jealous of her mom, but. Uh, she had us sing to the cheese man. At yeah. Work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I love the Lord and just want to thank him for all his blessings, and I've told a couple of you, but. Um, when most of you had left today over at the uh, little picnic, um, we took our grandsons up on the hill, and um, our oldest grandson, Alden, he's eight, 
and um, he's questioned for like two years since he's been like six years old. He's questioned and questioned, and we didn't want to be the ones to push him. It, it has to be a personal choice, you know. And uh, he was up at the uh, pond in the Littler when he said, we want to go back by that place where Jesus got baptized. And I said, well, honey, Jesus didn't get baptized there. So we went into all this, and, and uh, Alden was really interested, and he knelt and prayed. He gave his heart to the Lord. Praise the Lord. This morning, Praise so Lord. I'm so thankful for that. And just pray for him that that's been my prayer for those boys since they've been born, is uh, that they continue to grow strong and healthy and love Jesus most of all. Amen. You know, Amen. that's what I want for him. And I just love the Lord. I've been standing looking down narrow road. Trying hard to find my way back home. Why I've strayed so far, I'll never understand. But that same road will lead me home again. Oh, that same. While the preacher of the hour is getting ready, you may want to stand and testify this evening. Anybody at all? Well, if not, Brother James, come on, let him preach to us. If I'd known for sure I was, I was preaching or not, I'd have, wore, I'd have wore a jacket and I'd have come a little bit better prepared. Had a good time today out... Uh, uh, out there at uh, Legacy Farm, and uh, while I'm uh, while I'm up here talking, turn your Bible to the Book of Jude. I don't really have a lot burning on my heart, but uh, I think I think it just seems to me like uh, like Peter when he said, uh, as far as giving the word that he would stir up their pure minds by way of remembrance, and I think more and more that's what we need. If, uh, if, if a preacher comes to you and says, I have something new for you, then, uh, then I'll tell you what, you just, you just walk away from him. Because there's nothing new that the Word of God hasn't already established. Uh, a few years ago, there was, uh, there was a thing that had come out in the charismatic movement, and you can 
say whatever you want. Some of them call us charismatic. But, uh, but I still get excited about the Lord. But anyway, uh, this one pastor had said, uh, said, just lay your Bibles down. We have a new revelation. And I thought, boy, how dangerous that that is. We don't need a, a new revelation. What we need is a good revival in our hearts. That's what we need. People's looking for something. And I'd made the statement, hadn't been too long ago, uh, whenever you take the absolute authority of, uh, of the authoritative voice of God, which is his scripture, when you take that away, when you negate that and you take that away, people will look for something. They'll look for another voice. They'll look for another, uh, another power to come into their life. And usually that's a power, their, either their own self, their own hearts. And we know what Jeremiah said about the heart. You can't, you can't follow the dictates of your heart. The Bible says that, that your heart is, is wicked. And I know from experience that it is. I can, I'm like Brother George. I can only speak for me. Uh, I know me, and I probably said it last time, but if you know me the way that I know me, you probably wouldn't like me. Is that a true statement to, to just about everybody? Uh, but the book of Jude is a, uh, is a book of remembrance. But I just I praise the Lord that we, uh, that we got to ride the little gator and went up on the hill, went up there to the cross. And I know I was wanting to hurry up and get that thing back uh, because I knew that, uh, that other people may want to use it. And, but so I dropped them off up there at the pond. They was wanting to go over. And you know how kids are. They just love water. And they went. Went over there, and when I come back, I met uh, George and Teresa. They was leaving, and, and they said, well, most everybody, there's still a few down there. So I thought, well, I'm just going to go up and get the family and uh, bring them back, and we'll just go ahead and leave. But whenever we got up there, my old, uh, oldest grandson just looked up at, me, at us, and he said, I want to be baptized. We explained to him what this little square was. He said, I want to be baptized. And the uh, wife said, well, honey, you have to... Uh, you have to believe, you know, and you have to pray, and you have to be saved. And he just kind of looked questioningly. And I told her, I said, uh, said he needs to be explained. He needs just a little, just just a little background. I'm not going to great theological depth, you know, but something that I can understand. Just the simplicity of the gospel. I'm glad it's simple enough that that a child can can understand it because he did. We sat and we uh, uh, we explained to him how God sent His only begotten Son. And I even said, "Now, honey, I said, you know what John three sixteen says." He just looked at me and, uh, and kind of said, mm, what? And I said, for God so, then once I got for God so loved, then he started saying it. I said, what does that mean? And we began to talk back and forth, and, uh, and I, I'm, I'm so glad that we got to kneel down there on that little bench, and we got to have prayer, the little grandson. And uh, in a few weeks, as soon as we notify everything, uh, everybody, then we're going we're gonna to go back to back to that little same old spot, and we're going to take him down to the water hole. We're going to baptize him. And, uh, but uh, what a wonderful thing. Right. Folks, just to have that kind of faith uh, is something that's missing in, uh, in a lot of the churches today, uh, that kind of faith. Uh, faith can be a tricky thing, Brother George. It really can because we can establish our faith in so many different things of this world. Uh, faith has been, once again, uh, faith has been negated down. Uh, uh, it's so easy to follow emotion today uh, and reckon it for faith, but, uh, but emotion is not, is not faith. Uh, to feel something is not faith, but just to know something outside of evidence in your, uh, to the existence in your life, but just to know something, to believe something, that's what faith truly is. And I'm glad that, and, and as Brother George uh, preached, uh, preached out there today, I noticed my grandson, he was sitting on my lap, and he was watching Brother George. And it's amazing, though, when the kids are little, uh, how they'll question things. You, you don't think that they're listening, but they are. Uh, on the way home, a lot of times, they would ask questions. You know, what did, you know, what did he mean? And I'm telling you, if you get something wrong, they'll check you on it. Uh, but I've seen both of them. Uh, both of them uh, was listening, and so we, we took him home, and Took both of them home over to their mom, and I said, "Now, hon, I said it's it's important. You need to you need to tell your mom." And he's just this way. He's just backwards, and he and and he'd say, "You tell her." I'd say, "Honey, you tell her." So here come the youngest one flying up there. Mom, we got saved. <laughs> and then Alden spoke up, and he said, uh, "He said, well, he said I got saved." And uh, mom, mom just rejoiced and just hugged him up, and 
Uh, but just, just thank the Lord that they're still coming. People say they're too young, but I, I would that I could go back in time and, uh, and be just a young child and once again, once again believe just in that childlike faith. Folks, faith, uh, faith is, under, is under fire today. And that's what I want to, to talk to you tonight about. Uh, Brother George asked me, he said, he said, are you preaching out there tonight? And uh, I didn't really say anything, but I came and I just, I just figured, and sure enough, come over and, and come here. And he said, come over, I want to talk to you. He said, he said are you preaching tonight? I said, well, I can. I, you know, I want to I obey, obey the Lord. And uh, I just want to, it's just something that's been on my mind. I'll tell you, this, this political rhetoric that goes on in this country today uh, and even uh, even even with this virus you don't know what to believe you really don't so you always err on the side of caution uh, on things and yes the mask I believe are, are probably necessary maybe necessary I, I don't know so you see you just you just don't know uh, but probably the chiefest cause uh, the chiefest thing and I think I may have mentioned this last time I was here the chiefest problem that's in the churches today is faith or the lack of faith. Uh, in the book of Jude, Jude, Jude spoke about that. Jude is a book of remembrance, of, of calling, uh, calling to the church, uh, just to remind them what the apostles preached uh, of the treacheries that would be, uh, that, that, that they would face, that the, that the early church, not only the early church, but the church throughout all of history would be facing uh, it talks about the certain men that would creep in unaware and that they were um, ordained of old uh, to that condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. And, but he, but he, told them, uh, he, he told them about their faith, that their faith needed to be established. Now, I could read the entirety of, of the book of Jude to, try, to kind of give you a, a little more uh, of what I'm talking about, but... It says in, can anybody tell me what chapter I'm going to read out of in the book of Jude? Jude chapter 1. How about this, just Jude. But the salutation of Jude, it says this in verse 2, it says that mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. And then verse 3, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation... It was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should be that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And then go over into verse uh, about verse uh, sixteen. We'll kind of pick it up there, speaking about faith. It says that these are are murmurs. These are speak, it's speaking about uh, about men, about people that would that would come on the scene. And we, we know that according to the scriptures that the spirit of Antichrist has been since the time of Christ. But he says that these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust and their mouths, speak great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Verse 17, but beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. And then in verse 20, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, Amen. praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourself in the love of God, Amen. looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some having compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Are you there yet? I'm there. I hate that the flesh, uh, that my garments should even be spotted by, by this old flesh that we have to endure. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, we love you. 
Father God, just for, just, oh, just for a few moments of time, Father God, we pray you'll just consider your servant. And Father God, I stand here, Lord, as always, as, as a needy creature before you, dear Lord. There's never a time in my life that I don't need you. And Father God, Lord, when it comes to the time of the preaching of your word, dear God, this is your word. These are your people. Father God, I am your preacher. You're the one that called me, dear God. And we ask you, dear God, Lord, that you please just speak from the heart of the preacher to the heart of the people, dear God. And by your spirit, dear God, even as an arrow from the, uh, from the bow of the Almighty, dear God, that you will direct it into the hearts, dear God, of the people. Father God, we love you, Lord. Father God, we just ask that you do a work in these last days, dear God. Help us, dear God, Lord, not to, uh, not to run from the responsibility, but Father God, to increase our faith, dear God, that you have called us into, Father. Lord God, we do love you and we praise you. Touch your people and those, Father God, that's watching, dear God, uh, on the internet, dear God. I pray that you will touch them and give them encouragement, dear Father, God, in these last days that we're living in, because surely time is at hand. when We could see the Son of God, the darling Son of Heaven, descending in power and great glory. Father God, and we're looking forward to that day when you call us home. We love you and we praise you and give you honor and glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Just praise the Lord for his goodness. Uh, faith. Faith can be a tricky thing. You know, folks, faith is not established in the good times. Faith is not established in the bad times. <laughs> Did you know that? If it's not established in the good times and it's not established in the bad, bad times, then when is it established? It's established all time. <laughs> good times and bad times, it's all times. Our faith will rule our thinking and set our patterns uh, for living Amen. is what our faith will do. And we'll grow that faith like the mustard seed. And we'll have faith for the work that God has called us into. Folks, every single day, that, uh, that, that, the, that the sun comes up, we have a need of faith. And I'm just afraid, like I, like I said earlier, that there's so many people today that, that operate uh, under the emotions of the moment and the emotions of the time, and, and they feel as though, though that if they're going through hard times, if they're going through sickness, that for some reason God has left his throne and the angels have gone on vacation somewhere. But folks, that's not true. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. And it's up to us today to establish that faith. You say, preacher, I don't believe that. I believe in the John 3, 16 Christianity. And we see it all over the church world today. That there are some that have believed 20 and 30 years ago and, never, and have never grown past the place of John 3, 16. Folks, we need some people just to grow up and to be the man and the woman that God has called them to be. No longer be that person that is just of an infant faith. Folks, there's a saving faith that we receive the, that, uh, of that grace at the time that we, uh, even before that we are saved, God has placed into us the ability to be saved. Why do you think that it is that, that you can go any place in this world, some of the most remotest parts of the world to some of the most uh, remotest uh, if that's a word, the most remote tribes, and they will seek something to worship. Whether it's a tree, they'll, they'll etch themselves out uh, a little statue somewhere, and they'll set it up, and they'll begin to worship that. Why is that? That's because God has placed within them some kind of a faith. It's that seed that makes them want to worship something. And that's how, and just like our grandson that would come, he, he, he may not have understood all the messages being preached or maybe all the things taught to him in VBS and in Sunday school, but he knew somewhere deep down inside him that there was something, uh, that there was something there that was greater than him and something there that would make his life and his, and the, his entirety better. Amen. And he knew that. And there is that that faith that we receive, and it's the grace that we receive through faith. And that's what Ephesians says, for by grace, through faith, are you saved in that not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. 
There is a faith that we can receive that God places within us. And thank God, but once we are saved by the grace of God, uh, my friends, listen, uh, uh, there is a growing time. Uh, They talk about sanctification, and there's so much uh, turmoil and so much strife, uh, so many arguments about sanctification. But I'm telling you, unless God sanctifies you at the time of the birth uh, and sets you aside uh, and you die out to your sins uh, and be made alive to Christ, uh, uh, you are not His Without the Spirit, we're none of His. Uh, thank God, and I'm glad that at the time of the new birth, uh, He will place His Spirit down within us. Thank God, and He will enable us to be able to walk that common life, uh, to be able to get up and to face the troubles uh, of each and every day uh, that we have to face on the job uh, or in the family or in sickness. There will be a faith uh, that will be placed there that will enable us uh, by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit uh, uh, to live a godly life uh, and to reject uh, uh, the sin of this world. Folks, I get so tired of the narrative that goes around that says that we have to sin a little bit every day. I'm telling you, if you feel like that and you sin every day, uh, then your father is the devil. Uh, You need to come out from among them, uh, and you need to be a separate person. Uh, I'm not saying that you'll uh, you'll ever be perfect, but I'm telling you one thing, thank God, uh, that that if you don't know whether or not God uh, lives within you, how can you not go? Uh, How can you not know uh, when He uh, who dwells in eternity uh, and He lives in eternity how can you not go Uh, how can you not know whenever he abides in your heart you will know that he will abide in you there's the saving faith if you're here today and you're saved you know God never placed a gold star on the forehead of people that saved I can't look out brother George can't look out across the congregation it was Billy Graham he he said he said I reckon that only about 10 percent of the people that came forward if that truly got saved. I read in my Bible that there's a fixed way, that there's a narrow gate, and few there be that find it. But broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many, many are going into that place. There's going to be a few that's going to be saved. There's the saving faith. There's a saving faith that is given by God. Folks, we have no right to claim credit for our salvation. As free will Baptists, we have no right to lay claim on our salvation. It's God that saved us. Not only is there the saving faith that we receive at the time of the new birth, but then there's the everyday living and the keeping faith of what Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding and in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall what? He shall direct thy path. There's the everyday living, the everyday keeping faith of God that will be established within us. Folks, he will enable you to help you to walk each and every day. I'm telling you, I don't know what I would do if I woke up one morning and knew that the Lord had departed me. I wouldn't know what to do if I had to walk each and every day and do my everyday toils uh, knowing that the Lord was not in my heart. Uh, and I'm telling you, if you're, if you're here or if you're out on, uh, in, in the Internet and you don't know Christ as your Savior, who are you going to go to? Uh, who, do you fall, who do you fall upon? when troubled times come. I'm telling you something, folks. We need to come to Christ. We must come to Christ so that we can have that every day living in the keeping faith. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. And then there's the dying faith. You see, there's a faith that will come at the time of death. I've been at the bedside of those, and I know Brother George in the job that he does, I know that he's been at the bedside of saints that have passed on. And I've been at the bedside also of those that didn't know the Lord. Yeah. And folks, and there is a difference. When you come to the crossing of the river, thank God, and your feet, you begin to feel your feet. And the water of old Jordan, that old death river, began to lap up against your feet. Folks, you're going to want to know that you have somebody that's waiting for you, Brother Roy. I say praise God. There is nothing in this world that will ever take the place uh, of God's love. Uh, and in our life, thank God. Folks, I want the Lord in my life, don't you? There is a faith. Folks, but today we're seeing a faith that's slowly being eroded away within the churches. I don't know about you, but I, uh, one thing that's missing in the churches that used to be there, folks, there used to be a shout. <laughs> 
Amen. There used to be a shout in the church. There used to be a worship in the church. There used to be a praise in the church. And it was all a reflection of the faith that existed within our hearts. If, folks, if you have faith in your hearts, I believe that it will pour out. Brother Jess Osborne used to say it like this. He, 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 said, he said, whenever the Lord just shows up and, the, and I can just feel the Spirit, he said, I know he's here because he overflows uh, out my eyes. Uh, I'm not telling you that we have to live on emotions, but I'm telling you when God touches you and when God abides in you, you're going to know it. Amen. What are we to have faith in? See, that's a big question. The, our own ability to bless ourselves. Brother George, you know what? If I want to buy a car, I can put plastic on the barrel head. If I need to pay a bill, I'm going to get that for Brother George gets it. There's not one single thing in this world that I would desire. Now, I'm not talking about the extravagance. I'm not talking about mansion. I'm, not talk I'm just talking about anything. If I need something, you know, I don't have to pray about it. You say, oh, preacher. You see, we, we look at only exercising our faith when it comes to things that we have no control over. Is that right? When it comes to our health, and after the doctors have done all they can do, when I have tried my very best to heal myself, doctors then will turn to prayer. Yeah. It's the same way in, in every corner of our life. But what happened to prayer? What happened to the testimonies that, that I've heard come down from people? One preacher that I knew, he's, he's, a, he's passed on. He said, to, he said, let me tell you a story about faith. He said, we had a bill that was coming up. And it was $217. I, I think that that's the accurate, accurate amount of what he said, $217. It's been a lot of years ago, and that was a lot of money. He said, I ha we had no idea how my wife and I was going to get this money, but it was due. This bill was due. He said, and we prayed. We just laid it down at the feet of the Lord, and we prayed. And he told me, now this come from his own mouth. He said, he, he said the next day, he said, the Lord sent a check at the hand of one of the brothers. And the brother just told him this. He, he, he said, I don't know why. He said, but the Lord just told me to bring you this money. And it was for the exact amount. Yeah. Folks, now don't tell me that faith doesn't work. Amen. The only thing is that we don't believe that faith works. We're to have faith, not in the objects of this world, not, not to have the, the, the uh, faith in, in our own ability to work in this world, but we're to have faith in a person. Amen. And who is that person? That person is the person of Jesus Christ. That's who we're to have faith in. Let's not forget coming to church, come, coming out to church. We're not doing God any favors just by coming to church. We can't do God any favors. All we can do is just abide within the light of the Lord. That's all we can do as one of His. We don't do Him any favors, favors, Brother Jim, by standing and singing. I don't do Him any favors. Listen, folks, He is all-powerful. He can do all things. But what we're to have faith in is not our ability. Thank God. Our faith, if we have faith, it will generate to our works, and our works will bring us out into God's house and to do those things that God has commanded us to do. That's what our faith will do. We can't, we can't work and, and show our faith, but folks, faith will generate works within our own lives. That's what faith will do. Who are we to have faith in? We're, at faith, we're, at, we're to have faith in the person of Jesus Christ and his finished work. Faith in God. He is our hope. What's your hope today? Is your hope anchored in Jesus Christ? That's what Hebrews said. said that our hope that we have is an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. Amen. Folks, in this, in, in, in this day of rocky, of rocky shorelines that we live in, I'm sure glad that I have an anchor to the soul. I'm glad that I have an anchor to the soul. I want to call your attention to uh, over in verse 20. And it says this, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Number one, the call is for you. Amen. 
It's for you to do the action. It's for you to build. I'm not talking about the saving faith. I'm not talking about so much the, 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 the keeping faith and the dying faith. I'm talking about that everyday faith that will cause us to grow and, and to grow up and to draw just a little bit closer to God. The everyday faith, you can't expect your pastor you can't expect the deacon. You can't expect. You cannot rely on other people to build your faith. That's that's where that's where people get off. They come and they'll sit. They'll sit. And they'll cross their arms and they almost have an attitude of, "Well, Lord, bless me if you can, folks." But I want to come to the to, to the house of God and I want to get something that the Lord has for me. Sometimes it's through a song. Sometimes it's through the preaching. But I just want to come and I want to build up my own self on the most holy faith. Why? Because that's the most important thing within my life. It's not whether I live. It's not whether I die. It's, it's, it's how I live and it's how I die. That's the most important thing and that's where faith comes in to being at. I want to live for the Lord. How does faith come? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. What does that mean? That simply means this. It's, it, it's not just coming and listening with the ears. Listen, folks, I will listen a lot of times. My wife will verify this. I will, I will listen, but I won't hear. Any of you other wives, can you attest to that? I think they call that selective hearing. But I forgot. I, I can't really remember what, that, what, what that's about. But faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That means a little bit more than just passing to hear. That means from going here to the comprehension of hear. The hearing of the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. And folks, whenever we get into God's word, why is it so important? If I was to ask most of the church, not only here, I'm not talking about this church, like I said, but it's that church down the road somewhere. How many, how many of you have picked up the word of God today and just ate of the word of God and let God speak it into your hearts and establish it within your very soul? Faith cometh by hearing. It's the comprehension of the Word of God. That's the most important thing. And that can only come by the Spirit of God. No other way can we, can we get the Word of God engrafted here unless God, amen, because it's spiritually discerned. Isn't that what the Scripture says? That the natural man cannot receive the things of God because it is spiritually discerned. And God has to place it within us. That's what it means. That's what it means to... Build up our faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. The call is for you to do it. And to do what? To build up yourself. You say, well, that, just, that, that, that surely sounds like a doctrine of, uh, of works. It's not a doctrine of works. It's a doctrine of responsibility. If you, if, if you want to you lead your family, if you want to lead your grandchildren to the Lord. If you want your neighbors to know, just a little story, my mother-in-law, little Barb Conley, you all know her. I think she gained a little weight. If I'm not mistaken, she's probably about 74, 75 pounds. That's, that's no exaggeration. That's, that's fact. Long about 1988, we was married 1986, 1988. We gave our hearts to the Lord over to the Wakefield Church. And, and, I, and I may have told you this story last time that I stood in the pulpit, but I'll just tell it to you again because my memory's bad. Every day we had just moved back on the farm. We hadn't been on the farm too long back there. Y- y'all seen whoever came to the picnic there, you've seen our little, our little shack there. But every day, every, every Wednesday and every Sunday, every Sunday night, every revival, every meeting, every conference meeting, there she'd walk out with that Bible and she'd get in her car. We knew where she was going. You could set your clocks by her. You could set your clocks by her. My wife got under conviction. She had, been, she had, she had gone to church for, for years. The only time I went to church years before that is because my girlfriend did. I was just a little old young thing, and I, I just wanted to be with my girlfriend. It wasn't her at the time, but that's another story. But just to show you exactly what your act of faith will produce in other people's life, you may not even know the people's watching you. Do you know that? Yeah. Amen. You may not. 
You know, especially during this time of coronavirus, there's still people that's watching you. Well, they're not going back again, are they? Well, that, that, that makes, let me see, how many, that makes 11 weeks that they haven't gone to church, knowing that the church house is open. Yeah, the restrictions of the mask, it's, it, it's inconvenient. But anyway, my mother-in-law, she would get out and she would go to church. And we seen that. My wife, went. she came to me on a Saturday, Saturday evening. She said, honey, she said, I'm going to go to church. The condemnation and the conviction power of God had fallen upon her. And it wasn't, it wasn't because she went and she heard a preacher preach. It's because she watched her mother. She watched her mother get out and go to church. She wouldn't hound us. She would invite us from time to time. But she watched her go to church. And I said, well, I'll just go with you. And we went the next morning. And I'm telling you, something happened to us on that day. August the 21st, 1988, that was our daughter's one-year birthday. We went to church, and God saved us. Amen. What a wonderful birthday present Amen. for our little child. But thank God, she had built up herself upon the most holy faith. And that's what we need. The mandate is for us to do the work of our faith building. It's God's responsibility to place the seed of faith within us. I think it's in the book of Galatians, if I'm not mistaken. It speaks about it's the measure of faith that's given unto every man. That measure to, that enables you to believe and to be saved. But folks, whenever we're saved, there's something, there, there's something that has to be beyond that. And that's what the writer is saying. He says, build up yourselves. The mandate is for us to do the works, to build the faith within our own lives. And how do we do that? We do it by doing the Christian disciplines. What are the Christian disciplines? I'm glad you asked. Amen. We're to pray. Listen, this, I, I'm not bringing any, any extra revelation to you. I'm just telling you, and I can, I can show you how the Word of God. We have to pray in faith. We have to assemble ourselves together. Not neglect the assembling of ourselves together. And we have to read and eat of the Word of God. And I'm telling you, you do those things, you pray in faith, thank God, and your faith will be established. And the more that you do these things, thank God, then we can be like the, like the hymnist that wrote this, that said, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. Thank God, now oftentimes, it's not even a sweet five minutes of prayer. Why? Because we won't talk to the one that we have not established our faith in. If we establish our faith, then we're going to know that he is that friend that will stick closer to, than a brother, and we're going to want to have the communication, Brother Bob, with him. Hey, man, now listen, I'm not just saying you, you, you. I'm saying ouch, ouch, ouch. Amen. Because I find my life oftentimes, Brother Charlie, so busy that I have, to, I have to just set out times sometimes just to have that five minutes of prayer when I could do better. I'm just going to confess. Is that okay? You say, well, you shouldn't even be in the pulpit. You're right. <laughs> Probably shouldn't. But the mandate is for us to do the work. Because why? It goes on and it says this. It says, but beloved, building up yourselves on the most holy faith. It is the most holy faith. Amen. We don't want to build up ourselves on any other, on any other foundation other than Christ. And I'm telling you, if you don't build up yourself on Christ, you will be building upon something. Right. Amen. I want to build up my most holy faith that's founded in the person of Jesus Christ. It's not founded in religion. It's not. It's not founded. It's not founded in the everyday grind and every Sunday grind of just having to get up and go into the house of God. It is a delight to be able to come into the house of God. Isn't that what? Isn't that what King David said? He said, "I was glad when they said unto me, let us go up into the house of the Lord.'" Amen. I'm glad to be out in God's house. I'm like Brother George. It just feels good be able to come out to God's house and all oh, I would that every one of God's creatures would feel the same if all of God's people out there that God would just have faith and just and just pour into the churches the church houses would be filled uh, overflowing to capacity I'm telling you if we truly believed uh, what the good old book says thank God that we'd have revival down in our souls that would spill out in our neighborhoods uh, and thank God and it would it would it would it would fix this old nation that were that, that were under right now Amen. we need revival Amen. thank God it needs to be established in the most holy faith that's found in Jesus Christ and lastly he, he goes on he says this he says but ye beloved 
building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Uh Uh-oh, there's that charismatic word, that Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Without the Spirit of God, you're none of His. Amen. Amen. How can we how can we pray in the Holy Ghost? You first have to possess the Holy Ghost within your heart. He has to live and he has to abide within you. If you don't have faith in him, if your faith has not been built up into God, you will never be able to pray in the Holy Ghost. I know that there's times, Brother Roy, that, that we pray. Now you may not be like be like me, but there's times that you just feel like your prayers don't go any higher than the ceiling. Has anybody else ever been there? But you know, the Bible doesn't say just to pray when you feel like it. It doesn't say just go to church only when you feel like it. If I only done these things when I felt like it, I probably wouldn't do it very often at all. But he doesn't tell us to do that. After all, it's the just that shall live by faith. After all, I'm I'm kind of making a big circle right back around to where I started. If you go on the emotions of praying in the Holy Ghost, if you just try to establish yourself in the emotions, then you're missing the mark. You still pray if you don't feel it. If you don't feel the urgent need within yourself to go pray. Folks, that's the time to go pray. And I'm telling you, there is no area in our life that that the devil doesn't fight us the hardest. It's this. It's the studying of the Word of God and praying. That's where he fights us the hardest at. And if he fights us the hardest there, those ought to be the things that we do and be most fervent about doing. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Once again, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. It all comes right down to this. Why do we need faith to be established in our hearts? It's not just for me. I want to leave a legacy. I'm not talking about legacy. legacy far. I'm talking about a legacy of my own life. It was James Dobson that said this. He said, as Christians, he said, we ought to live our lives as though we're at the end of our lives looking back. Now, chew on that just for a few minutes. I don't want to get, I don't want to, get to the end of my life, Brother Jim. And have the what ifs. What if I'd have lived closer? What if I'd established faith? What if I hadn't just, I, th- I think there's a, there's a song that, that was out a few years ago. What if, what if I had prayed a little more? What if I had established that faith? What if I had done better for the Lord? What if, what if, what if? I don't want to be faced with those. Right. Folks, not only is there, is, is there benefits for me to have this faith, for my faith to be established, but there's benefits for my children. Yes. Not only our children, but our children's children Amen. and our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. And Brother George sparked something this morning in my mind, and, and I was thinking about, you think about the saints that have already gone on to be to be with the Lord, and I always have a hard time saying that they died when you know when 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 a child of god passes that's just what they do they just pass from here to there and i know i I know the bible says and they died and they died and they died and i know and i know what it's saying but do you realize that the legacy that you live behind will live on that grandmother and i think i spoke about her last time that 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 one that mother that that my mom would send us out to the legacy that she left behind. And I had another grandmother that was a praying grandmother, and she affected my life. And, and Barb uh, Conley, that uh, my wife's mother, and her grandfather, Audie Conley, was, a, was an Enterprise Baptist preacher. And just the legacies that they lived behind, they left behind. Do you realize that, that they are still receiving reward? Brother Roy, that has preached the word, I don't know for how many years. 50 years maybe I'm just going to throw out that number he's, he's trying to think right now in his mind you say for 50 years seen souls saved souls saved and then 
Then that testimony went out, and they testified, and they testified, and it began to spread. And we're not going to know the fullness of the reward until we get there. But do you realize that, if, if, that, that, that the grandson that we prayed with today, there will be not only a reward for us, but a reward for my grandmother. And then the ones that preached the gospel to her, right on down the line. Can you imagine out, out of the scriptures what kind of a legacy that Paul, and Peter, James, Jude, some of these have left behind that have affected people, just, just the reward. I'm telling you, you will receive a reward. That's why it's so important to be established in the faith. Be established in the faith that when somebody asks of the reason of the hope that lies within you, you can tell them. You'd be amazed at the people that, if you ask them, say, could you lead somebody to the Lord? No. Let me call the pastor. Folks, that ought to be the first on, on our list. Know how to do that in the simplicity of a child just to lead them to the Lord. May God bless you. But I hope somebody got something out of, out of this tonight. But folks, establish yourself in the faith of the Lord. It may not have been a rip, roaring, jumping, spitting, shouting, Fiery message, but I'm telling you, in the, in the day that we're living in, Brother George, we need to understand these yeah. things. Amen. That this world is not our friend. Amen. That the God of this world is not our friend. Right. That the children of the God of this world are not our friend. Even though, I, even though my name is on some register somewhere as a resident of the United States and a resident of Ohio and Scioto County, I'm glad that my name is written in the book of life. And I'm glad that that, 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 is, that, is my, that is my home. I'm already a resident there. And I'm telling you, they'll not impeach Jesus. They'll not throw him. There, there's not enough demons in hell to cast him off his throne. But thank God. I'm glad I'm going to get a go there. And he is all powerful. And he is the sovereign of all. And he dwells in eternity. Thank God. I'm glad I get a go to be with him. Amen. Let's all stand. Brother George, would you come and just take over? I was thinking as Brother Jim was talking about uh, churches don't shout like they used to. Uh, years ago, just a thought came to my mind. Um, you can shout, but you can't really shout the victory if you don't have the victory. You can shout. Anybody can shout, but you're not shouting the victory if you don't have the victory. I'm not saying that you're not saved. I'm not saying that you're not forgiven. But sometimes we allow Satan to overcome certain areas in our life and we don't have the victory in those areas. And when we don't have the victory in those areas, you can't come to church and fake it. You can try. <laughs> and other people might <laughs> get a little happy because you're happy. But you're going to know down in your heart and God's going to know. And so it is very important to stay close to where God has for you to be. Your brothers and sisters are getting beat up out there. Those ones that can't make it out to church. You say, how do you know that? Because I'm making it to church every time the doors are open. And I'm taking a beating some days. It is by the faith that God has given us. So keep walking. Keep holding on to him. He hasn't changed. As a matter of fact, it gets a little bit better when things get worse. It gets a little bit better walking with him because you feel the grip of his hand just a little bit stronger. So, Jim, I needed to sit over here tonight and listen to you preach. Um, God sends just what you need when you need it. There's no need to even doubt, no need to even wonder that. You just have to pay attention to when he speaks, to what he says. Take it and apply it to your life. I'm going to ask you tonight, this is how we will close. Let's pray for everyone that has not been here since March. Once we are done praying for them, let's then in turn turn and pray for ourselves, that God blesses us, that we can continue carrying on the work that God has for us to do, not just in this building, but among those people that we come in contact with. I like what Jimmy said. Not everybody. Some people are retired here in this church, and maybe you don't have to get out and go as much. Some people still go to work, and they go out, and they're among the community. And when you do that, there are people out there that maybe God has placed just you 
in front of them. You need to be the light. You need to be the witness. And you can be. You say, I don't, I can't, I can't. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Because <laughs> God never picked anybody by looking at their ability. He never picked Moses by saying, here comes a good-looking guy like Charlton Heston, and he could speak well. He looked at him and said, hey, you. And he came. He turned. He saw the bush. He came, and God spoke to him, and God used him, uh, and he'll use you as well. Let's pray for the folks that haven't been here, that God strengthens them. We'll pray for ourselves after, okay? Lord, as we come to you tonight, God, we do pray that you would watch over our brothers and sisters. Lord, for those who have been unable to come, and Lord, there have been some who have been unable to come longer than just this time of the coronavirus, Lord, but some because of health situations in their life or maybe uh, situations in the life of their loved ones, they've not been able to be here. God, I pray for them that you will bless them, that you will encourage them, that you will protect them today, God. Uh, maybe they're not going to church any longer, but God, it's not the that they're not a part of the church. And so, God, I pray that you will give them the help and give them the strength that they have need of, Lord. And then I pray, Lord, for myself, Lord, and for this congregation of people that are at least still able to make it out and to go about and, and uh, to come to church and to hear the word of God. Help us, Lord, never to take for granted, Lord, uh, the opportunity to come at the kneel at an altar, the opportunity to hear uh, the preacher preach. I know, as Jimmy had said, there are things that seem like they've continually changed, God. And we've been in church for a long time, almost 30 years worth of preaching and pastoring and watching uh, churches just seem like that sometimes people are just losing. And, and God, I don't know why we should even be surprised at it when the scripture says there will be a great falling away. Uh, not only within the church, there may be people coming that in their spiritual walk are falling away as well. And so, God, I pray that uh, you would bless us all tonight, Lord, to grow closer to you, Lord, to be encouraged, to be able to take the word that was given tonight, Lord, and apply it to our lives. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for all you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, folks. See ya.